Closing arguments took place Tuesday at the James Holmes trial in Colorado. The prosecutor told jurors that Holmes was legally sane when he entered a packed movie theater armed with an assault rifle, a shotgun, and a pistol, intent on killing as many people as he could. And the defense insists Holmes was controlled by schizophrenia. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman has been listening to arguments all day today. And Ricky, I know that the defense um, has already presented its case. What stood out to you? I think what was good from the defense, you have wonderful advocates, by the way, here on both sides, and it's a pleasure as a lawyer to watch. The defense has really the tough road here. So what did the defense do? The defense talked about not only the facts of the case, but really sent home the message about reasonable doubt. The prosecution has the burden of proof here to prove that James Holmes was sane at the time of these events beyond a reasonable doubt. In addition, what the defense did that I think was very powerful from their point of view was really go into what this mental illness really was and to talk about consensus. He looked at all four doctors, although two came up for the defense and two for the prosecution, but he would look to find their common ground. And one of the issues of common ground was that clearly this defendant is mentally ill. He has mm -hmm. a mental disease or defect. There is no dispute about that. Another that I thought was really interesting was when he talked about the fact that all of the experts agreed that you can be psychotic. You can be in the midst of a psychotic episode and you still can plan. So I think that that's really critical on the part of the defense because the most powerful evidence for the prosecution were these months and months of planning. The other point of agreement is that this defendant had a psychotic break in 2012. So we know that that happened. Could he decide right from wrong? Prosecution says that he could do so legally. Defense so that says that's not the standard. The question is, could he distinguish it morally? How many angels dance on the head of a pen? Mm. Ricky, uh, the prosecution, meanwhile, not only did they try to say that he methodically planned this attack and that, in their estimation, makes him sane, they interspersed between the legalese the stories of some of these families and some of the victims that were killed in that horrific shooting. What kind of effect does that play on the jury? Well, I think it's very powerful and emotional. And one of the things that the prosecution wants to do, and they should do, is remind people that although we're looking at the mind of this defendant, that's the issue here, but we should not forget who the victims are. And they throw on the, um, well, that's an unfortunate word, they put on the uh, uh, jumbotron there mm -hmm. in the courtroom. They show on the monitor the pictures mm -hmm. of these victims. And, and, and stuff that's, like this. that's powerful. Um, because it makes them real. And what are the, one of the places that we used to think that you were always safe? You could go to the movies. What was ever going to happen to you in the movies? We knew there were school shootings. We never thought about movie shootings until something like this occurred. And so the idea of sympathy for these victims is a great motivator for the prosecution so it doesn't have to get lost in the technicalities uh, of mm. the psychological evidence. You know, law is based on fact, but does emotion have a lot in, is it to do with a jury's decision? Of course. Um, I do believe that jurors really strive to follow the facts and follow the law. I'm a firm believer in the jury system. Whether I agree or disagree with their verdict at any time, I will always respect it. Because I think that jurors take their oath so seriously. And in a trial of this magnitude, in a trial of this length, these jurors understand what the law is. They can look at the law as it's given to them in the charge from the judge. They can go back to their paperwork of these instructions and they can sift through the facts. These are jurors who are allowed to take notes. Uh, these are jurors who are allowed to ask questions mm -hmm. or present questions that the judge could ask. One of the psychiatrists, the main psychiatrist for the defense, there were over 50 questions from the jurors put to her. And so when you get to that, they will look at the facts. But we cannot ever divorce ourselves from emotion, no matter how hard we try. You're human, right? Right. Sure. Yeah. Ricky Kleeman, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.